I'm going to be looking at QWQ from Quen, which is a 32 billion parameter reasoning model. I am on my M4 Mac Mini Pro, which has got 24 gigs of RAM, and it's the base model. So it's the 512 gig SSD. It's got just the standard off the shelf configuration. It's around £1,300, $1,300. So, according to Quen, the QWQ reasoning model is a medium sized model which is capable of performing competitively against DeepSeek R1 and OpenAI's O1 Mini. So, what we tend to find is these stats are biased towards making the models look good. But when you're comparing a 32 billion parameter model against a 671 billion parameter model, even if it's only in certain benchmarks and in certain tests, and we're getting similar types of performance, that's really interesting, especially for people who want to run those models locally and privately on their own computer. So there's no way on earth I'm going to be able to run a 671 billion parameter deep seek R1. I can run the distilled versions and I have done in other videos, but this is the first model that's giving me deep seek like an OpenAI O1 Mini like performance on my M4 Mac Mini. So potentially really really interesting state of affairs here and something that's well worth experimenting with. It's been uh, available for a couple of days now so I have Olama installed on my Mac which is a very simple next next type installation. I've already done a, um, a pull of and a run over of QWQ on this machine um, but now I'm going to start putting it through its paces. Because it's a 20 gigabytes file, I wanted to do that rather than wait two or three hours beforehand. So I'm just going to rerun the uh, Olama run command. Down here I've got the GPU history which will start to see kicking in. I've also got activity monitor which demonstrates the uh, memory and memory usage. So at the moment um, we're kind of all good. I'm just going to say hello, warm the model up. First time you run a model, because it's got to load that model into memory, it can take a little while longer than subsequent prompts. So, you know, just be mindful that this one isn't you know, that representative of the outcome that you can expect. Once this has completed the hello, what I will do there we go, that's good. What I'll do is I'll um, actually exit out of Olama and I'm going to go back in with the uh, dash dash verbose. So do another hello. And then I'm going to be getting stats around the tokens that are being used to generate the response and the overall response time. So it's just a, a really straightforward way of working out roughly how long things are taking. So there we go, 12.9 seconds. So not terrible considering the size of this model and the amount of resources that it's taking. So one of my standard tests is to ask a model to write 500 words about, let's try artificial intelligence. Now on the Deep Seek R1, the 32 billion parameter distilled version. This test takes around 90 to 120 seconds. So it will be interesting to see how this one pans out. Okay, so 
obviously that was fast forwarded and it took overall four minutes and 16 seconds which is much longer than other models have taken but I dare say the quality of the content is higher that's the thing that we just need to be mindful of is if this is equivalent or competitive to a 671 billion parameter model on certain tasks then it's reasonable to expect it's going to take longer to generate a response especially if the quality of that response is higher so I'm I'm happy with four minutes especially the way I have this uh, Mac Mini set up. This is to process AI related tasks. My daily driver is a laptop, it's a, my M3 MacBook Pro, and then I offload certain tasks this so I can definitely hang around four or five minutes or 10 minutes for certain, ta certain tasks to complete. One thing I noticed whilst that was completing its job was the um, the memory pressure was kind of peaking a little bit uh, and it is right now so even though the GPU is not functioning so you know, that's because obviously um, a large proportion of the memory is being utilized 19 gigabytes of the whole system memory is being used by Olama to host this model so I'm going to try and ask it to produce some lyrics from a Beatles song. Okay. This I expect it to struggle with. Although, in one of my previous videos, I did test this out on Mistral Small, the French language model, and the model did a really good job of providing me with the actual lyrics. So, this may hallucinate some crazy stuff as basically what I'd expect it to, but you just never know. Okay, so that took 3 minutes 18 seconds and didn't do a very good job, especially the you make poor boys like me grow long hair. Not part of the lyrics. So hallucinated quite a fair bit there. What I want to do now though is I want to give it a, um, a test to see if it uh, understands a slightly more nuanced prompt. So please provide some example prompts for generative AI to Okay, so please provide some example prompts for generative AI to help with the creation of Python scripts. So I would like the generative AI to produce three examples of Python scripts. So what I'm getting at there is I don't want it to produce the scripts. So I'd like it to produce some example prompts. So then I can then reuse those with the um, with the gen, gen AI to produce some Python scripts. 
be interesting to see how it gets on with that. I don't know if I've necessarily worded it very well, but you know, let's see if it riddles that out. Okay, so that's taken 3 minutes 51 seconds and it's done a pretty good job, I'd say. It understood the context of me wanting uh, prompt examples and not necessarily just script um, examples. And it's just given me some output that it thought you know, a, a, um, a, gen AI, a gen AI might uh, might produce. So I think it's, um, it's done a good job there. And, um, and like I say, probably maybe even kind of overachieved in in there it gave me some examples so for the final task I'm going to give it I'm going to um, open up Misty and Misty is a wrapper um, that can leverage the power of a llama and I've got QWQ running in Misty and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it to have a read through this um, randomly generated document that I produced the other day so it's um it's not very good in terms of the overall content it's just random gen AI stuff but what I'm going to ask it to do is to summarize the attached document so this is a really useful real world example where you get a um, a document maybe a manual and you can start asking questions of that manual mist is great for this and there are other tools out there that you can use i'm um, also experimenting with anything llm to do similar kind of tasks the main benefit of anything llm is that it's um it's open source and it's uh, released under an mit license so you can use that for commercial purposes this one's a uh, the free version is non-commercial you have to pay for a um, a year subscription which i think is about 65 pounds about 80 dollars so you know it's not mega expensive but at the moment i'm just testing the um these tools out to see which one i prefer and what i do like about this is you can just drop in pdf and then you know give it a job to do Right, so it's done a really good job there. It's actually gone through, critiqued the document, probably not what I was expecting. In over, what, three minutes and 20 seconds, it's critiqued the document and realised that there's some real rubbish in here uh, because it's just uh, generated by AI without any broader context. I just let it write a thousand words on the topic. But... Um, it's spotted some errors. It's um, given me a lot more um, to go on than I assumed it would do. It's um, oh, I think it's done a really good job, and I think this is the uh, power of connecting these tools into applications like Misty or anything LLM to then start drawing out useful insights from the documents that you've got to hand. So I'm going to continue playing with Misty. I'm going to continue playing with anything LLM. And if I find anything really exciting to um, share with you guys, then I'll do that. Um, if you're interested in AI and particularly running AI tools and processes on a Mac in a private and local fashion, then have a look at this video over here.